Hey everyone. This week I wanted to talk again about values versus benefits. <laughs> uh, I talk about I talk about this all the time, and it's one of those conversations that we just have to keep repeating until everybody gets it. And I want to take a different tack today. So I want to give you an example. I've got some notes, so apologies. I'm going to be looking across to the left, and it will probably be a little disconcerting for you. But I want to be really clear and give you the specific examples using real customer data, so I can start to to really land this. So conceptually, what are we talking about? Benefits and value. I will always use these two words very, very differently. I often find that my clients mix them up. When we start working together, we'll use the two interchangeably. And here's why that's dangerous. Benefits are incredibly different to value from a customer's perspective. Now use that word value to define what it is that's important to the customer what's driving them, what's motivating them, what are their problems to solve, what are the opportunities, where do they want to engage with us, what do they expect our purpose as an organization is. Value is all about customer perspective, and only customers can tell us that in their own words. Benefits are all of those other things that we do that earn us promotions, help us hit our performance scorecards, balance the budget for the business, so think cost efficiency, productivity improvements, think revenue growth, all of those things are the stuff that matter to our organization that customers really don't care about at all. And do not even try and pull the prank with me around customers care whether or not we stay in business. Not valid, we're not going there. If you'd like a private rant, by all means, contact me and give me a call and we can go for it. We can go for it. Um, so, so conceptually, that's where we're going though today. Value is defined by customer versus benefits, which are all of those things that make us feel like we're doing a really good job and probably also earn us promotions in our business. And I know that that in itself can be a bit of a challenge to come to. So sit with it. That's, that's the perspective that we're coming from. But but hold on to that perspective because there is so much to be gained from taking that perspective. So what I wanted to share with you today was that was some real customer data, some real um, examples. So in this example, um, I'm going to talk about a customer who was implementing a, um, a technology product, um, a fiber connection, a telecommunications product. And so within that, there's an element of the software that's, de that's required to deliver that particular service. Um, there's an element of hardware that's required in the customer's home to be able to connect up and use that service. And there's obviously a whole bunch of stuff that goes around that. So tech installs, customer support, there's you know this whole infrastructure around getting a customer essentially connected to the internet. Um, so this could potentially apply fairly equally to satellite connection, cable connections. Um, but, but that's the example that we're talking about, right? And so this particular client I was working with had a whole bunch of uh, measures in place around making sure that we measured handling time for agents and call centers, making sure that we measured the amount of time that it took to get a service, quote unquote, turned on and working um, for that customer. We want to make sure the lead time was relatively tight. We had customer satisfaction measures. There were a whole plethora of things that we were measuring in this organization. Um, and I have talked on different blogs about like sharing that journey around how when we set all these measures, it doesn't necessarily result in a great outcome for customer. So this particular company, this particular client I was working with, wanted to improve um, the delivery of this product to customers. They wanted to improve how they were handling the delivery of this internet product. And they had a whole bunch of programs in place, right? So we knew that coming through the call center, customers were calling up with um, essentially a, like a, a, a tech support type of inquiry around, can you help me get my internet working? Um, that was coded uh, within the IVR, the voice recognition software, so that there was a there's a call type that was called this particular type of tech support, like get the customers get the customers going. Tech support, kind of broad context. And the company also had a whole bunch of initiatives that were targeted at improving this type of stuff. So 
by that I mean reducing the volume of tech support calls that were coming through this particular call center. And so I'm going to read to you a couple of the, the ideas that they had on the table. These are, these are programs that are work in progress towards that desired outcome of a better um, product for customers and fewer tech support calls. Good for everyone, right? So they wanted to improve their communication with customers. They wanted to make sure that they were really clear with the lead times to customers so that they were setting expectations and making sure that customers weren't calling back before you know, it takes us time to turn the internet on for you. Please don't call us back every five minutes. Like, you need to give us a couple of days. So that was one of the programs that they had in place was about how do we effectively communicate our lead times in terms of putting in that service so that customers know what's going on, right? Very well intentioned. We know, we know the point that we should be getting another response from you. Uh, they had another program of work, which was around making sure that when they were shipping a particular piece of hardware to a customer, that they gave out the shipping number so that that customer could self-track whether the parcel was up to in the process um, and they weren't calling the company back to say, hey, where is the thing that you said you were sending to me? They had the access to the postal system, the courier system. Customers could log on and check that themselves. That was another, number two. Um, number three, reviewing the way that orders were entered into the system within the call center. So a customer calls up and says, hey, I want the internet turned on. There's a process by which we put an order into our system. Let's make sure we tighten up on that so that we're not putting errors into the request that's coming through. Let's make sure that there's, we're minimizing those errors because that generates a whole bunch of like, hey, it's not working or I'm not getting what I expected at the other end. So let's go right to the front end and understand like, how we're doing that entry process and make sure that that's really tight. Uh, they wanted to also look at the sales process and the way that they selected products for customers, again, with the intent that customers weren't then calling six weeks later and saying, hey, I'm not getting what I expected in some way, shape or form, or hey, my internet's much slower than I expected, my, my internet's not working properly. Um, oh, well, that's because you're on this plan where we actually gave you a slower connection, but we didn't quite tell you that. So they wanted to tighten up on that sales process. Um, they wanted to simplify the product offering so that customers weren't getting confused with a whole bunch of stuff being bundled together and what it was that they were buying. So simplify that, that, um, that product offering on the customer front end. Um, and adjusting some KPIs um, at front of house to make sure that the consultants that were in the call center were not simply focused on their immediate call, but actually they were focused on that end-to-end -end piece for a customer, like the, the, the way that the customer navigates the entire system, rather than simply that, that initial call and did I get it right in the moment. Actually, can I ask a few more questions and make sure that we've, we've put things in place that means that we're not going to have an error down the track. So we're going to train our staff a bit more. Uh, two more. There's another program around streamlining the activation process, so the hardcore, like the software that's required in the background to activate this product. And we're going to remove a, um, there's a minimum lead time in terms of internally when we put a request in to get this product turned on, there's like a minimum lead time before we start that process. So we're going to remove that and see what happens if we remove that, right? So there's roughly 10 programs there. Now, to my mind, when I review those, so communicate better to customers, um, simplify our product offering, um, make sure we do some sales work up front to really capture what customers are after and, we, and that they understand what they're getting, giving them the shipping number so that they can see themselves when, they, when their thing's supposed to arrive. All of these things kind of sound like, in the longer term, we're going to reduce that volume of tech support calls that are coming through, right? It all seems relatively rational. What we did was we went and scratched the surface and we said okay let's go and sit in the call center let's listen to what customers are actually saying and here's what customers were actually saying. Most of them were calling and saying have you got that port available on the exchange yet to turn me on because I've called before and you didn't have slots and I'm, I'm calling again because I want to know that it's available. So we can't connect your internet because there's not the port for you on the exchange. That was what 90% of customers were calling about. There are a few customers that called to say, to say help me set up my hardware. 
a very small number of customers that were saying either I need help with my installation in some way, where is my modem at, you missed an appointment, um, or a pushback where actually the customer is calling and we can't do anything because you haven't provided us a proof of occupancy. Um, and then a few more customers that were actually just calling for a username and password. And that was the next layer underneath that tech support piece that was actually going on. So from a customer's perspective, can you connect me? I've been asking for this service for so long. Have you got it together in the back end yet that you can actually deliver me the service? Or help me set up, help me get, help me get going. What's my username and password? You know, it was not communicated effectively to me. I don't understand. Um, you were supposed to turn up to an appointment, you didn't. Or, oh, well, I didn't even realize that I had to prove to you that I live in this place before you'll connect the internet. And there was one call. So in this example, it was less than 2% of calls were around, where is my hardware? And that was the only type of inquiry from the customer's perspective that any of those other 10 programs actually did something about. And yet when we look at those list of programs, all that stuff around streamlining a product offering and making sure that customers understand and you know going and retraining our front of house stuff to put stuff in properly or to focus on customer end to end, all of those things sound like really great initiatives, but none of them, the multi-millions of dollars that we're spending investing in all those programs, none of them are going to actually impact the customer other than that one about making sure that the customers have their shipping and tracking ID so they can actually see where their modem's up to. And so for me, it was just, when we went through this process, it was one of those really stark examples of, hey, we are trying in everything that we do to do the best for our customers. But the reality is that because we haven't started to see this from the customer's perspective, because we're using categorization of problems rather than that rich context those I statements from customers about what's actually important to them, because we haven't done that due diligence and we haven't brought that context into the conversation. Remember previous episode about bringing high context into financial decision making. Because we haven't done that, we now have a whole series of programs. We're spending a whole bunch of money. Guess what? We're going to come back again next year and we're still going to have this huge volume of tech support calls because we didn't actually fix the root cause problem because we didn't have the data, we didn't have the context around what was actually generating from a customer's perspective the thing that's going to make the difference. And to me, that is the criticality between value and benefits and why those two things should be separate because all of those programs might make a whole bunch of difference around our productivity, um, our measures of cost in terms of running our IT systems, but they're not actually going to have the valuable impact for our customers around, hey, you can't even deliver the service that I'm calling you about, or what's my username and password? Like just the basic stuff. So the stuff is not hard. It's, it, it's, it's, sorry, it's not, it's not rocket science. Uh, it's relatively simple. It, it simply requires a little bit of diligence and a change in perspective. That's the hard bit. Once you're on board with that, then starting to distinguish between value and benefits and being really clear about when you're making a decision for benefits or value helps to start to generate more of these conversations and starts to hone that focus towards what really matters for customers. And that's where you're going to start having the impact for customers that actually takes cost out of your business, that actually generates revenue growth, because from a customer's perspective, you're doing what they believe you were put on this earth to do, and they will have more of that. Thank you very much. So that's my rant. I will continue to rant about value versus benefits um, ongoing, probably every couple of months, and just sort of drum that one home, because I feel like it's just one of those things where we've got to go through all these different angles on the chandelier before we actually kind of click into it. Um, but yeah, this one's super, super critical. And the more that you can be distinct in your languaging, the greater your opportunity to start to hone into and, and be really honest with yourselves and your colleagues about why you're making some of these decisions. And it's okay to make decisions just about business benefit. It's totally okay. I would suggest that if you're doing it without the context of customer, the benefits might be dubious, but that's also my perspective. So there's nothing wrong with making decisions one way or another, but be really, really, really clear around understanding 
which space you're acting in. Um, because I think all too often we focus on those benefits. Those are the things that we measure in our company because that's our proxy for understanding performance. And actually we neglect all of this value that we can add to customers. And that's where you start to unlock those opportunities around leading through intent and guiding and distributed decision making because everybody understands where we're actually going rather than policy and procedure and, and starting to you know, try and, and replicate those measures that the organization pays attention to for our own perceived health. So that's it, rant over. That was a bit of a long one. Hopefully that example was helpful for you. Uh, if you've got any questions, please drop me a note below. I would love to hear with you. This is an ongoing conversation. And I hope wherever you are in the world today, you're having an awesome, awesome day. Thank you so much for your time. I'll see you again real soon.